Throughout my financial journey, I've been successful at learning the nuances of how finances work in literacy. And then also throughout my financial journey, people, friends, family, and just random strangers see the success that I have and they want to ask questions and they want me to help them financially. Uh, but the problem I run into is they don't have the same drive and motivation that I have. But in today's video, we're going to talk about the things that frustrate us, me and Alex, about people that come to us about financial advice and where their hangups are at or what issues they run into trying to follow our advice. With that being said, Alex, take it away. Yeah, guys, uh, welcome back. I mean, uh, this is Passive Money Plan. My name is Alex. That's Kirby. Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel, uh, to this video as well. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I mean, how do you want to dive into it, though? You just want to talk about, like, the, like, different uh, issues that people come across? Uh, well, I'm going to do it. Let's do it like this. I'll ask you first. Um, so in your journey, I know you started, you know, you started with your antiques business and things like that. And it, now it's more prevalent that, you you know, you're, you're over 20 years old, you know, had a house built and things. You're doing successful rental. You're a rental entrepreneur now. Congratulations on that. But um, so now I'm starting to see, I know people are starting to see your success. And then with success comes questions. You know, it's people that want to replicate what you did or they want to be better financially. Hmm. So when you're giving people advice, just give me some of those frustration points you have when you're talking to people. What are the things that, you know, hang that you believe hang them up in the process? Yeah, so one of the biggest ones, that I hate to hear is the uh, when people ask how much money they need to start um, and I tell them and I basically tell them now I started telling them actually what you told me to tell them, which is you got to invest till it hurts. I used to tell them invest as much as you can, but obviously people be like, well, I can invest 20 bucks. Like, no, like you have to. And I, I, I told my stepbrother uh, this actually the other day he asked me, and I said, just so you know, I don't mind showing you what I know or what I study, but you have to take it serious in the way that you're going to be investing like you're paying another bill, meaning you're paying 500 a month, 250, 500 a month starting and then leading to your, your, you're investing thousands a month and you have to get to that point and just treat it like it's another bill. Cause I think for most people, they they have to have some kind of like schedule. Like they have to know like, oh, on the 15th of the month, I have this bill due or I have this bill due on the 30th. Or, like they need to know, like I need to put this much aside. But I hear a lot of lack of uh, commitment or willingness to invest that kind of money. Um, I think uh, I mentioned to you one time, um, one person had asked me how much, what's the minimum they could start with uh by trading options. And uh, I had told them probably 800 bucks for like one contract. And uh, they, they were so upset at that, like $800, like, but you know, here, here they are like buying a new car, uh, you know, right. talking about blowing money elsewhere, buying their kids Christmas gifts. So it's the frustration for me is people want to create all this money. They want to do maybe what I'm doing, what you're doing, but they don't want to, make the sacrifice needed or necessary find the financial sacrifice to actually get there it's not just a, it's not a scratch up card it's a it's a way of life it's a you know life. you know you never gamble you call it a scratch off card called scratch off ticket oh my bad yeah <laughs> yeah guys i've never bought a scratch off ticket sorry <laughs> never not even one uh yeah i do not know how to gamble <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's just people, they, they, they treat it like it's, you know, they want to treat it like it's a lottery. They, they think it's a simple thing. Like they don't have a concept of how real wealth and money is created. It's a long-term life commitment. It's a, you have to treat it like it's, you know, your investments in your businesses or whatever, you have to treat it like that's your other spouse or that's your, you know, child or whatever. Like you have to be committed to it on a daily basis. And you have right. to change your life. Yeah, and I agree with you 
a hundred percent wholeheartedly. They have that, uh, you know, instant gratification uh, on your part of they want to invest twenty dollars because they do treat it like it's a lottery. Because the reason why they want to, they do that because they think the people that have money or that are wealthy or rich, they think they did it by luck. It's either movie star, athlete, or won a lottery. They don't. And then, you know, like, you know, we talk about the Grant Cardone's of the world, the Robert Kiyosaki's, the Warren Buffett. People probably heard of Warren Buffett, but they think, oh, he got lucky. He did something uh, nefarious to people to get money. They believe if you're not an athlete or you're not an entertainer or something of that magnitude, then there's no way for you to get wealth unless you do something nefarious to somebody else. And that's not the truth. The, the thing is, and no matter who anybody listens to when it comes to to finance, finance, financial teaching and learning, it's all about sacrifice, discipline, sacrifice, discipline. And I think that's my biggest uh, hang up when it comes to people asking me about, you know, financial advice. They don't want they don't want to learn or they don't want to have the discipline to keep going. You know, like like you're saying with the uh, setting it up as a bill, you know, setting it up as a as, you know, like you're committed to it, like you're committed to that car payment. You know, that's how you should be more committed to your financial security in the future. But people are not. People are more things, instant gratification, I got to have it now. And then the, the crazy part is, you know, you talk to somebody when you first start your financial journey and then no, they're not in there. The next thing you know, you fast forward two, five years later, they're still in the same place, but you didn't elevate it higher. And then they they see the success you're having, but they still don't want to commit to a different way of life. And the next thing you know, you fast forward 10, 20 years later, you're ultra successful. They're still or worse than where they are. And the only thing they can say, oh, man, I should have did it when you did it. But that still won't give them the nuance or the thought process to, you know, shift gears and, you know, start going to a more of a financial literate life. Now they think, now their excuse is be, oh, you went you know, you made it too far, there's no way I'll catch up with you. So now they think that the 20 years you sacrificed and let's say you got up to this high, they think, they think, oh, they need a magic button to go from here to up here. Not knowing that if they got halfway or a third of the way to where you got with the 20 years of sacrifice, they'll be way better than they are now. So they just looking to get to your level instantly when you did the sacrifice. They know what you've been doing. They know you've been uh, you know, slowing down on going out and not hanging out or not, you know, spending extra money and stuff like that. But they didn't want to do it. But now, now they excuse why they won't, you know, go to that next level is because they believe that, oh, it makes no point if I can be where he's at or be where she's at. Yeah. And then they end up being in the same spot for a long time. And um it brings me to another uh thought is uh People don't see the the work you put into anything outside of a nine to five as actual work. They right. and I was laughing a little bit uh, earlier because uh, as you were talking, it start I started thinking. Uh, my mom said, uh, she said, "Yeah, you and Kirby just go online, press a couple buttons, and make all this money." <laughs> like she thinks it's just luck, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's just, it's funny, you know. They like a lot of people. They just they don't understand uh what actually goes into it um you know and obviously yes it is as simple as going on pressing a couple buttons for options trading but the amount you have to study a company and research a company and look at the charts keep up with earnings you know there's there's more that goes into just you know hey let me just pick this random stock and trade it um, right right so I would say I would say that too. I mean, uh, that would be another pet peeve of mine with uh, people is they don't um, they they uh, they prioritize their nine to five before you know investing for themselves, or they prioritize their nine to five over uh, creating their. They always call it call it a side hustle or a side business when it should be their main focus or their main business. Right. And because in the same breath that you're saying that is if you're going to give, you know, eight hours a day to somebody to build their dream, because if you're working for another company, 
is people in the upper, upper echelons of management or ownership that you're building their dream. They created a business and now you're an employee of that business and they're sitting there. And when you get to, you know, depending on the size and scale, they're doing roughly little of nothing and all the workers are just building their dreams. So if you're willing to give eight hours for somebody else's dream, how can't you at least give eight hours to your own dream? And that's something that people don't understand. It's, oh, I'm I'm tired. I can't do this. And I remember in that uh, reaction video that we did, uh, fun, I think it was fun, stop having fun reaction video. You said yeah. that, that's Kirby. Yeah, that's, that's me 100%. When people say they don't have time, my first reply is, did you sleep at night? And then you get the excuses. Oh, you got to sleep because science say you have to sleep. They, they think they're smart. That's what it is. <laughs> they, 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 they think they're smart. And then uh, and then I always say I always say this, and I love the new background, success. Success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. If you don't get nothing else from this video, know that. Success leaves clues. Successful people, they do things. Like, and then the same, one of the same people that told me that, uh, oh, you, you can't sleep. You have to get eight hours in a day. And then, so I brought up the Dan Pena's where he talked about he slept in his office. Then I talked about the uh, the Elon Musk. I talked about the um, uh, the late great Steve Jobs and stuff like that. And and then they came back and said, excuse me? Bill Gates used to sleep at his desk. Just pause. Bill, Ga Bill Gates also. But um, and then and then the only person they knew, of course, was uh Elon Musk. And then they were like, Elon Musk didn't sleep at his desk. So I had to send them a screenshot where Elon Musk bragging about, oh, I slept in my office many a days. And then they just sit there. Oh, well, I can't do that. Well, <laughs> success leaves clues. Like everybody thinks that it's a secret to getting wealthy. The information out there, it just nobody wants to adapt their life to the hard work and dedication that goes with it. So they choose to just stay broke, stay poor, and they rather complain about the people that go through the sacrifices to be successful than them going to do it. And that's that's a pet peeve of mine. And I have on my favorite shirt. It's okay if you disagree with me. I can't force <laughs> I you to be right. I was wondering what the bottom part would have said. <laughs> I can't force you. I can't force you to be right. And that's the thing. And that's what I always say. That's what I always say to people when they say what they can't do. When they say they go to sleep at night. And um, and that's not, you know, some a model or something that I just do for YouTube. I actually live it. I mean, I remember when I was broke beyond all repair that I didn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I mean, that's how nerve wracking it was for me to say, oh, I don't even know where my next dollar is coming from. So I stayed up and I grinded, I grinded. And then now I can afford to sleep, but I still grind to learn new information. I grind to do different things. I'm not saying that once you get to a certain level that you can't sit back and relax and enjoy your time, but I'm, I still want to keep grinding. But that's the thing people don't want to people don't want to give up the life that they live. Like you said, lottery. You know, they still do they lighter, they still do their normal life. Oh, I'll pay two dollars for a Powerball ticket and hopefully I hit it, then I can just go do it bigger. Well, for that person that can get struck by lightning twice in the same place, that's how lucky you have to be to hit the lottery. For that person who who does that, great. But for the rest of the 99.99999% of the people in the world, you have to make sacrifices. You have to be dedicated and you have to invest and look at your money on purpose, on time, all the time. But nobody wants to do that. Everybody wants to shortcut. And they don't realize when you're getting information from somebody who has created wealth. Um, I mean, even if, you know, forget us, let's talk about the the Dave Ramsey's of the world, the Robert Kiyosaki's of the world. Anybody on YouTube that has success and they're giving you the information, they're giving you the shortcuts. They're giving you shortcuts because think about it. They went through this whole process and had to learn the ups and the downs and everything that goes along with it. They didn't grind it 20, 30, 40, 50 years of learning what to do and what not to do. Everything that they're, they have to learn it and go through the trials and tribulations of it. And then when they regurgitate this information on a social media platform, like we are, are here on YouTube, they're giving you what works, what don't work. You're getting the shortcut. So what else do you want? You want them to do it for you? You want them, you might as well go to work and just hand me a paycheck. 
But all successful people always say dedication, it takes dedication to be successful. And that's the same thing we preach on this channel, the dedication. If you don't have that, then you won't be successful, no matter what. If you think you can lollygag through and then do half the stuff people say and then do it your way, or you think you're smarter than the person that's giving you information, you're wasting your time. Because if you was, if you in financial strength and you think you're smarter than the person that's giving the information, you wouldn't be in the situation you're in. So stop wasting your time, let alone their time, because they're not going to waste your time. The people that successful value time more than anything. They're not going to let you waste their time. Although some could be a hold like myself that just tell people they're wasting my time and I don't have time for it. Or they could be nice people like Alex. You know, give them hugs and pass them my yeah. muffins and stuff like that. <laughs> give them hugs. Uh, <laughs> but but either way, they're not going to let you waste your time. And then, and that's what I try to convey to people is you're wasting my time when I'm giving you information and then you want to tell me your view on the information that I'm giving you. I don't care about the, your view on it. Because if you have a view on it, and you know so much, you wouldn't be reaching out to me to ask me for help. So find the blueprint from anybody. It don't have to be from this channel. It could be from anybody. Find the blueprint and execute the blueprint like it's described. Don't get a blueprint and say, oh, well, I'm going to draw squiggly lines over here and do this this way. Because this is going to take you longer or put you in a worse off situation than you're already in. There's nothing wrong with getting the blueprint, following the blueprint. If you don't get all the way to the level that that person who you're receiving the information from, if you're halfway there, you're a thousand times better than where you were. That's the secret to success. But those things are the things that fuels my frustration and it's taking me to another level. I think I had to get on like blood pressure meds because people were just people were just making me mad because they would waste my time. And I it feel like I wanted them to be successful more than they did. And then that was just like the ultimate frustration. So now I just go off and then I'm just like, all right, peace out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say too, another pet peeve um, I thought of it while you're talking was uh, most people, they, they want to create a, they want a shortcut. It's not like they want to invest for the long term. They just want to know how to make money quick. But right. they fail to realize that if you're flipping houses or you're trading penny stocks, you're going to get hit with taxes. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it, it's a lot more than just making a lot of money. There's a lot of strategies and things that people need to study and research. Right. And we're, and we're not saying that it's something wrong. If you trade penny stocks, that's great. If you flip houses, that's great. But you got to have the financial literacy that goes with that. You exactly. can't just be, oh, I don't know nothing about nothing. Let me go flip a house. <laughs> right. You can't do it. If you're not monitoring interest rates, if you're not monitoring value, if you're not uh, monitoring loan value, if you're not monitoring rehab costs, if you're not monitoring uh, uh, after repair value, ATV, after ARV, after repair value, if you're not monitoring those things, you can be upside down in a large way thinking that you're a house flipper. It's not as simple as, oh, I paid a hundred, I paid a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, the materials cost thirty thousand dollars. I I'm gonna sell it for one hundred forty thousand dollars, and I made ten thousand dollars. No, because you forgot the cost to carry money. You forgot the cost of labor, and all the surprise and nuances that come along with doing construction. Alex, you just did some repairs. You see how stuff just popped up out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. You got to account for all of that stuff before before the deal is even completed to see if you have a good deal. It can't just be simple. Oh. I see this raggedy house here. Let me go flip it right quick and it's going to work. That's how they, that's how simple it looks to somebody that's advanced and a pro at it. But in the background, a part that you don't see is they're running the numbers. They're looking at the things that they need to make sure that this is a, a profitable endeavor before they take it on. They ain't just sitting on the couch one day and they saw some infomercial on TV and they say, oh, I'm going out there and flip houses and be successful. They put in the work. They're dedicated to the craft. That's how they're successful. And do it. Exactly. Well, guys, with all that being said, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, even if you dislike it, we would still appreciate a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down below, any kind of comment, and we'll see you guys in the next video.